All right, recording is uh, rolling. Welcome to Wednesday, October 4th. All right, so uh, original plan was to do the centripetal force lab today. Um, I didn't realize it until this morning, but um, uh, there was a PSAT uh, testing in this room. Actually, you guys are uh, right in front of me, sixth period right now. Uh, this is the first class I've had in here all day. So uh, pull the emergency activity that I'm gonna do with you guys, that, which uh, there's actually some good stuff we can get out of anyway. Um, to just keep all my costs on track. We're going to bump the centripetal force lab to uh, tomorrow. Right. Oh, before I get rolling on that, the flash up here, got some top scientists for uh, uh, dynamics quiz. Uh, you know what, just in case I end up doing one video for all my classes because we're all doing about the same thing today. Here's for my honor students. So I got honors and AP. All right, so good job there. Um, especially if you're on that list. All right, so there was, uh, there was this activity that I was plan to do with you guys the um, very first week of school and we never quite got around to it and it involved uh, making measurements with circles circle measurements okay so if you guys have a table on your desk looks like this okay. uh, I've, I've got some of these rows filled out from earlier today uh gotta do that right, and you guys should have some circles like a printed page with with ooh, some circles in a, in a grid in the background right okay right. so oh uh, actually it's not too bad this is uh, right before the centripetal force lab because there are a couple of uh, crossover applications between uh, this activity and the centripetal force lab. And so I'll point this out as uh, it's going along. Right? Uh, so we're going to measure different properties of circles. Right? We've got radius, circumference, area. Right? This last column, I'm going to have you guys do a calculation. Right? Oh, did you guys write your name on your paper? You guys wrote name? Right? Oh, uh, these three columns are going to be measurements. Right? So you guys got rulers, uh, okay, sort of thing, right? This last column is going to be a, a calculation. Just take the radius and square it. That kind of deal. Right. Uh, let's uh, let's imagine. Let's make believe it's like you know, five thousand years ago. Um, we're trying to figure out how everything in the world works. Um, maybe nobody really knows the idea of pi yet. Nobody knows three point one four one five nine. You know, five thousand years ago, nobody knew precisely that value, right? Right. Uh, and then it was like measuring circles like this that eventually led to those type of discoveries, right? Like. What is the value of pi, and what does it have to do with these properties of circles? Okay. Uh, there's also going to be a linearization uh, application that um, I, I was originally originally going to use this uh, very first week of school to uh, introduce you guys to the idea of graph linearization, like how do you linearize a problem? Okay. Now you guys have done some of that already with with other labs. Okay. Um, tomorrow's lab, the centripetal force lab, when we eventually put together the graphs, probably before the weekend hits, uh, there's going to be some graph linearization. That's a skill that AP wants you to know also. So, all right. So let's uh, let's get going here. You guys got uh, different circles. I think it's like six on the front and then yeah, the big kahuna on the back. Yeah. All right. So you might label these well, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven different circles. All right. Uh, what, what are these different values? So let's see, radial size is the radius of this thing. Uh, like pick one. I'll call this one right here circle E. How about that? Right. Just it, it doesn't matter what you call them. All right. What's the radius? And so I pull up my ruler. Let's see if I can nail right the center of the thing. It's right about there. Right? Uh, if I did take the center exactly, then all points on the circumference, the cir circumference of the circle should be equidistant from that radius. Right. So let's see if that's true on both sides. Uh, pretty close to. Right. Right. Uh, look about. Uh, maybe I'll call it like two point six centimeters. I think. All right. I'm going to say two point six centimeters. Right. If you got. 2.4, 2.5, or 2.7. That's okay. It's, it's, it's somewhere in there. Okay. So that many centimeters is the radius. Okay. Now, what's the circumference of this thing? Ooh, I, I do have to pass out some string. Uh, now, I was in a, I've been in a different classroom all day today, so I did grab some rollers before I went over. And all my other classes today, what I've had to do is just like roll the ruler around the circle, and you can get circumference that way. Uh, in a few minutes here, uh, after I stop this video, I'm going to pass you guys out some string, so uh, you guys will have the easier type version of this. Okay. Take some string, go around this thing, see what, what size that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. right. That's pretty close to, not, that's pretty close right there. Let's see if I stop it right there, unwind this thing. Right. What is the length of that stretch? Ooh, ooh look, look how long that is. Right. So circles always have like deceptively large uh, circumference, right? Like, like that whole length, it, it would take to wrap around that little circle right there. Right. right. Or, I don't know, maybe that's just in my brain, but um, that's looking like. Uh, uh, pretty much 16 centimeters on the nose, pretty, pretty close to it, about 16 centimeters. So I go 16.0, I don't know, maybe it's like 15.8, 16.1, so somewhere in there. Okay. 16 centimeters. Area, you know, for area, 
I'm going to have you guys just count the number of squares, okay? And uh, well, square centimeters. Uh, on my computer screen, when I designed this, each square was one square centimeter exactly. I printed that out, ran it through the copier, blah, 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 had all these copies. Uh, somewhere along that process, um, this got stretched a little bit by about 10%. So it's actually like 1.1 centimeter by 1.1 centimeter. Okay, so it's real close. So one of two ways you can handle that. If you want like really precise data, you could scale linearly each of these values. Um, I guess, what would they be, like down by 10%? Right. Alternatively, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fudge. I'm just going to count the number of squares and just kind of ignore the fact that they're slightly too large. Right. So let's say the number of squares represents the number of square centimeters pretty much, right? So, ooh, I can count the whole boxes. That's almost a whole box there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine. Okay, right. So I got nine there. Okay. Then I've got like some half boxes, three quarters boxes, kind of. Deal. Right. So I got nine so far. Uh, let's call uh, that and that can make 10. Um, maybe that and that can make 11. Uh, let's go, that's like 12. That's like 13, 14, maybe a little bit of change, maybe like 14, 14 and a half, somewhere there, right? I'll call it 14.5. Maybe if you do it yourself, you might get like the interval between like 13 and 16, probably somewhere, it would be a nice range of values, right? If I went back and recounted that independently, maybe I get something different, right? So something like that. And you know, th those are all like uh, measured values, right? So measured these first two with the ruler, I counted the number of boxes, okay? This last one is a calculation, right? We're gonna square the radius. Uh, why? Well, I'll show up in the graphs later. Um, so 2.6 uh, squared. Now, earlier today, I did not have a calculator with me on hand. So here, I'll show you guys a cool math trick that I learned back in middle school, right? Uh, so 2.6 squared, right? That's like 2.6 times 2.6, right? Um, so back in middle school, I learned this cool trick for multiplying any two two-digit numbers. You guys remember FOIL, F-O-I-L, right? This is kind of an application of this. Like this is like two plus 0.6, and this is two plus 0.6. You kind of think of it like that, right? I'm gonna do this in reverse, like, right? So last, outside, inside, and then first, kind of, right? So six times six, that's like 36, right? Um, two times six is 12, plus two times six is another 12, that makes 24. Now that's over a decimal place. So I have to do 24, but then tag on a zero because I slid over a decimal place. Okay. And then two times two is four, and now it's two places removed from the from the sit, right? So it's four and a couple of zeros, right? Add that all up, six, seven, six, something like that, right? And then, uh, okay, so I got two decimal places, right? Because one, two, so move that right there, right? Does that look about right? Well, two times two is four, three times three is nine. It's gotta be somewhere between four and nine, 6.76. Yeah, that's, that's about right, right? So that's 6.76, right? Kind of, right? So, 6.76 is the square of the radius, right? and that's in square centimeters. I gave you guys the unit for each one of these. So you guys know, just like normal in this class, numbers have units attached to them. So I went ahead and embedded the units in the uh, in the column headings, right? Like, like I normally do, right? Right. Uh, now you guys, right, living in the 21st century, having been through public school, you guys know the relationships among these uh, variables, right? Like if I say, what's the relationship between Radius and circumference of a circle. You, could, you guys could say circumference equals what? Two pi r, for example, right? What about area? Area equals like pi r squared, right? You guys know that, you've learned it, right? But let's make believe it's like 5,000 years ago and we're discovering this for the first time. We're trying to figure this out, right? So I'm gonna have you guys make three graphs. Uh, I explicitly typed two, but I really should have had this one also, right? So let's do circumference versus radius. Uh, let's do what should have been the second graph, go ahead and write graph three off to the side, area versus radius, right? right? Go ahead and write that, graph three, A versus R, right? And then what should have been the last graph, um, see A versus R squared. I'll show you guys where I'm going with that. Okay. You guys good so far? All right. All right. So um, you guys are gonna get a bunch of data. Uh, I did one row for you. You guys got to make these three graphs. So what are these graphs going to look like? Okay. Um, okay, so circumference versus radius. That's circumference in centimeters on the vertical, and then radius also in centimeters on the horizontal. Uh, area versus radius, this is the one that you guys hand wrote. Right? Area is in, could be in square centimeters versus radius in centimeters. Okay? And then uh, the, the, the last graph is a manipulated axis uh, 
graph, right? So this is going to involve linearization. But okay. Area versus the square of the radius, right? So area in square centimeters versus the square of the radius, which would then be in square centimeters also. Okay. Hmm. What is it going to look like? Okay. So, um, fast you guys, what shape do you think circumference versus radius is going to be? What 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 shape is this graph going to be? Uh, what, a long. Yeah, like a like a straight line, direct relationship, right? So if you like triple the radius of a circle, you also triple the circumference, how far it takes to go around, right? I bet that's going to work out to be a straight line. Right? What do you guys think the area versus radius? What shape is that going to be? Parabola, parabola, parabola right? Because okay. here, if I write down the formula, you guys know this is where this is going. You guys know circumference equals two pi r. You guys also know the area of a circle is pi r squared. Right. So here, let's look here. Um, like you guys knew the first one was going to be linear because if you put the circumference on the y-axis and the radius on the x-axis, right? Yes, yes, a linear relationship. Right. Oh, that's what else I was going to ask you guys. What do you think the slope of this what will be a straight line? What do you think that slope is going to be? Two pi, right? Right. I bet you're going to get something kind of close to six, right? Okay. Six point two eight would be two pi, right? Right. And then when you guys graph A versus R, ooh, that looks like Y equals something X squared. Yeah, that, that's a that's telling you a parabola. That should be a, like a parabola shape. Okay. And the last graph, I want you guys to graph not area versus R, but area versus R squared. Okay. This is this linearization trick. So now we've got area on the Y axis. Right. But uh, on the X axis, it's not the radius of the circle, but it's the square of the radius, X axis here. Right. Ah, uh, is shouldn't that go and linearize this this graph? Like, you guys did that with the Hot Wheels car. Uh, you guys had um, distance versus time was a parabola, but then you squared all the time values. And you said what's distance versus time squared, and it was blah 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 blah, lined up in a straight line, right? And, and the slope of that line ended up being one half of the acceleration. I, I don't know if we mentioned that at the time, but you guys know x equals one half at squared. So ah, uh, so it'd be like that, right? In this case, what should the slope of this linearized version be right here? Yeah, it should be pretty close to pi, right? That you get like maybe three, three point one, three point two, somewhere in there, probably. Okay. Three point one points. All right, you guys can see where it's going. Okay. Uh last thing I'll do here uh before I shut this video off is um well I've been collecting data all day, so I'll go ahead and start putting a graph together because some students might want want to see uh even at this point, like how to put a graph together. Okay. Let's say I'm just working with these five circles here. Uh what's my largest radius? Looks like eight. My largest circumference is forty-eight. Right, so I'll scale radius up. Let's see what we've got to work with here. Let's go two, four, six, eight. How about that? Zero, two, four, six, eight. Right. Uh, if you guys have bigger circles, it's going to go larger than that too. Okay. My largest circumference is forty-eight uh, square cent or sorry, sorry, forty-eight centimeters. I should say. Right. Let's go five, ten. Oh, whoops, no, that's that's not going to work. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. There we go. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right. That's some number of centimeters. Right? Uh, I can plot those points. Right? I got five different coordinates here. X, Y, X, Y, all, all the way down. Right? So four centimeters radius is 24 point something centimeters circumference. Four, 24. Bam, right there. Uh, 5.535, see, 5.5 and 35, that's bam, right there. Uh, 8.248, ooh, ooh 8.2, stretch it there, 48, bam. Uh, 1.8, 11.8, 1.8, right about there, 11.8, bam. And 2.616, 2 2.616, bam, right there. Oh, and look at there, Zs, look at there. Okay. So that pretty well lines up uh, to a straight line. And in fact, uh, I bet the slope is pretty close to 6.28, right? I bet it is, right? If I went and found that, make, like, make, make, make an equation of that. 
right. uh, let's do area versus radius. Right. So, oh, so now I'm doing these two columns, x, y, x, y, x, y, all the way down. Right. Right. So the, the radial values are the same. So I can just scale that axis the same. Right. Let's go like two, four, six, eight. Zero, two, four, six, eight, right there. Um, areas, the largest area is like 165 square centimeters so far. Right? And it, you guys have some bigger circles, might go bigger than that, right? So maybe we'll go like 50, 100, 150, how about that? Zero, 50, 100, 150. See my axis is scaled like linearly. Right? Right. Coordinates. 437, four, see 37 is right about there. Bam, uh, 5.576, 5.576, bam. 8.2, 165, 8.2, 1C. 67.65 is right about, bam. Uh, 1.8, 7.5, 1.8, ooh, 7.5, that, that's real tiny, bam, it's like right there, okay. and 2.6, 14.5, 2.6, bam, right there, oh, and look at there, look at there, does that look pretty well, like a parabola I'm pretty close to? I think it's looking pretty much like a parabola, right? Now the tricky thing about finding equations for parabolas is like, well, how curvy is the parabola? Oh, you gotta like pick different points and uh, you might be able to do it. <laughs> and, you know, maybe it's something I learned and forgot from algebra too, right? But the trick that I'm showing you in class is to linearize it. Say like, hmm, if I think it's a parabola, well, I can just square the x-axis and it should line up in a straight line. It's really easy to get a slip of a straight line, just do rise over run, okay? So last one, area versus radius squared. Okay, so that's these two columns, x, y, x, y, x, y, all the way down. Okay. So my largest r squared value looks like, uh, say, 67, something like that. Has to be in square centimeters. It's kind of an abstract idea, right? Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How about that? Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So square centimeters, right? So it's a manipulated axis. Right? Uh, oh, I guess my area is the same as before. I could just copy paste that. All right, let's go zero, 50, 100, 150. Zero, 50, 100, 150. Okay, all right, plot these points. So 1637. Um, oh, wait, what just happened? What did I just do? Did I? Oh, 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 oh. I, I'm being silly. I'm being silly. All right. So my radius squared goes up to 67. But like I said, it was in my mind. Okay, let's multiply all these by 10. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, that's what I meant to do. Right. Okay. All right. That would make a lot more sense. Uh, okay, so 1637. So 1637. Bam. Uh, 3076, 3076, bam. Uh, 67, 165, 67, 165, say, bam. 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3
Yeah, so R squared would be like the x-axis uh, x value, right? Now, if you want to, but the, the purpose of equations is to describe to the viewer, like what, um, like what means what, right? So don't just say like y equals pi x, like you would want to say y equals pi r squared, but the r squared would be the x value, yeah, yeah. So, so the reader knows, okay, like we're talking about relating the area to the radius. Right? Yeah, the area this is radius is area equals pi. And then yeah. R in parentheses squared. Uh -huh. um, then this one is A equals pi R squared in parentheses. Yeah, so both of these graphs have the exact same equation. They're both area equals pi R squared, area equals pi R squared, right? Just two different ways of representing it graphically, but it's the exact same equation. Okay, right? that's one of course is equals two pi R. Right. All right, okay. Uh, okay, so the other connection to uh, the lab tomorrow is um, you guys know I'm going to give you guys some uh, PVC pipe, string, plate of cancers, and you're willing to surround the circle, right? So say you're looking from above. Here's the plate of cancer that's swaying around the circle. Okay, you guys see it going around the circle? Right? Right, so some mass that's being pulled, right? There's a string that's pulled to the center, PVC pipes in the center. You guys see that, right? One of the uh, variables you have to figure out is, well, how fast is it going? That's like a speed. You might also say tangential velocity, like at any moment it's moving tangent to its orbit or trying to do that, right? Uh, maybe I'll just say speed, right? I wanna keep, be careful about saying velocity. It's not constant velocity because the direction is changing. And that's kind of the, the purpose of tomorrow. It's like, well, what, what force causes like a change of velocity? So I'm doing this mouse called some tripletal force, right? right? So how, how do you figure out how fast it's going? Hey, isn't speed distance divided by time? And isn't one trip around a circle? That'd be circumference. And you could have a stopwatch you could time how much time does that, that takes to happen, right? Right. And specifically what I'm gonna have you guys do tomorrow is calculate or, uh, time, sorry, a measure of like time, 10 revolutions and then divide by 10 because the stopwatch starting and stopping, whatever error is involved in that also gets divided by 10, right? So it gets, gets a lot more accurate, right? Ah, so you do 10 revolutions divided by 10, right? But you'll have some kind of distance, circumference equals two pi r, right? And if you're keeping the radius pretty well constant, then you can calculate what the circumference is, that's the distance, right? You'll have to stop at time. Then ah, you can divide this two and get the, the speed, like the instantaneous speed, okay? All right, so that's the circumference connection to uh, uh, what you guys are doing tomorrow, right? All right, so when you guys have a uh, uh, data table and three graphs, then go ahead and turn that to the gray tray, uh, give you guys points for that, and then we'll do some triple force lab tomorrow.